buy, sell, hold, who knows? It's time for stocks. We're back again with everyone's favorite game show on the podcast daily. That is Bill Landis, Jeremy Birmingham, and I am Austin Ward. Camp starts today. We are ready. We are, in fact, we're on the field right now. Can't wait. And training can't wait till this place smells like sweat. Mm, it's going to be a great month in here. Well, it is much cooler. They installed a ton of fans, yeah, Berm. I love it, actually. And uh, they're working quite well. So camp starts. We're going to have full coverage of that, of course, on the podcast and OhioState.Rivals.com. We've talked to awesome guys to watch. Who's going to, what position battles are going to shake out? But it's time to put some units down. Or Should not. We, or, <laughs> or get rid of your units. Let's, let's, let's look at this from a different perspective. Should we, obviously we're spitballing this as we go, uh-huh. should we create a faux bank account for each of us? Sure. That but we have to... Who's going to determine if our stocks are actually that's how many maturing or not? coins do I get? That's a great question. <laughs> we have to figure out how to separate the flat coins and who's determining if it's a win or a loss, okay. right? Um, America, you should figure out how to determine if this is a win or a loss. We'll, we'll start with each starting this season, starting now, okay. with 100 now. flat coins. Okay. okay. Okay? And at the end of the year, this is determined by whoever is watching out there, whoever comes up with the best system, uh-huh. the winner gets to shave the other two's heads. <laughs> Great, sure, fine. <laughs> no, I don't works, like that. Works um, for me. We'll, th- we'll think of a, a, of a you know, Something prize, better. But 100 flat coins each to start this season. Okay. And we'll need a running total, America. So however you're figuring this out, because I want to know next week if I have 105, I, I need to know that. Do you have to spend all 100 every week? No. You only get 100. But if I want to put all 100 on one thing, then I just say that thing and I have to talk the rest then of the season. Then you're out. Okay. This game is going to be The rest of the season. This game the rest is going to be The season? Until you have more flex. coins. This will be silent. If you, <laughs> but what if I what if my put 100 <laughs> flex coins on Ohio State's going to win a national championship? I know, but if you had to just stand here for every stock watch, <laughs> just, just silent. like, well, he would, have have to start, be, he would have to start selling also, off. Also, what are the odds? <laughs> That's what America has to figure out. That seems complicated. I thought, I thought the stock watch was going to be really easy okay. for us for stock the up. podcast day. Stock up. Sunny Styles. I'll take that one first. <laughs> um, All right. We'll see you look, later. Look, we, we talked about it uh, at length. Like, everyone we talk to raves about him. Not just what he does physically, but the work ethic, the way that he impacts the defense, the way, how difficult he is for the offense to figure out. Sunny Styles, I'm going to – I'm not going to make this a bold piece show, but, like, I think you have an All-Big Ten, All-American type – talent here and they're going to find a way to get him to that point this year and i'm going to i'm uh, sunny styles way up way up hmm. way 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 up that's why he wanted to go first all the shenanigans about yeah yeah i just had to be able to so launch, into, launch into my first tirade <laughs> sunny styles uh I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused on how to handle like i feel like we should be don't worry about this nonsense no, idea i feel like at this, on, America, at this stage of the game Stock watch should be like players worth investing in at the outset. Yeah, you're of prospecting. Camp. You're investing. Yeah, to like get the return at the end of camp. Right, That's sunny, the end of the season. Sunny Styles. <laughs> Not in December. I'm picking Sunny Styles. It's, I mean, he's still a financer either way, but like guys who okay, think fine. are going to have a good we'll, camp. We'll do camp stonks while America figures out the game. And then for the season, <laughs> we can launch into a different, uh, you know, we can take what America brought to our attention yeah. and deal with it from there. Okay. That sounds great. Okay. Uh, I would um, I would buy some stock at the outset of camp in Josh Fryer, I think. Um, and it's not just because I was sitting in his seat on Wednesday in the team room, which I learned after the fact, and also explained why the seat was a little creaky. A little lost he's osmosis, in it, and then a little osmosis like, uh, creeping that sir, in there. That sir, it's get, seat's getting a little bit of a workout uh, with the two of us sitting in it. So but it I, felt like greatness. It felt like greatness. I, I think like he was a little, um, what's the right word? Not like he wasn't like he wasn't cocky, but I think he perhaps did not have a full grasp of just how difficult the move from the right side to the left side was going to be for him in the spring, which he discussed about or discussed with you, awesome, when you guys talked to him uh, at the kids camp they were doing here earlier this summer, um, mm-hmm. and it was good to to hear that from him. Um, I think there were times throughout the spring where you're watching like oh, I don't know, like it looks a little rough out there, which I, I think is totally understandable. But when you juxtapose it with like just how confident he was coming into it in the spring, it was like okay, let's pump the brakes a little bit. But I think he did come out of that um, in a better place as he as he takes that position on full time. And I know we've talked a lot about the tackles and how that could settle out. I would be pretty floored with any other decision that that is not him being the starting left tackle for this team this year. And, and I think that. 
a spring where there was some good and some bad and some learning moments and, and a summer to kind of refocus yourself uh, is going to leave him in a good spot here as he gets camp rolling. I'm going to buy some stock in Taiwan Malone. Um, That's a good one. I, I said this a few weeks ago that I thought, and Berman and I had this conversation that maybe he fit into this category of like, why are we not paying so much attention to him? Uh, we saw the video on social media and then a, uh, it was a week or it was right the next week where I got to talk to him and get in person with him for the first time. And I was uh, blown away by the size and athleticism, even just of working at a kid's camp, but just eyeballing the physical tools. He's different, I think, than really anybody else in that unit. We know what Mike Hall's potential is. We know what Tyleek could do if he you know, taps into that energy on a play in play out basis. And Ty Hamilton has that, that high floor that they can rely on. But I think in terms of somebody who needed a different fit schematically uh, to impact the game and then also has a couple of years of development in an SEC program. You can say it's not the best one down there, but those weight programs don't mess around. You can tell the physical development that he's gone through, then adding some of Mickey Marotti on top of that. Uh, I think the opportunity is there for him to really be a factor, and I, I'm intrigued to see how that looks like throughout August. I agree, and I think that's in part because Tyleek Williams has been so inconsistent that and Ty Hamilton, while he's extremely solid, maybe doesn't have like that superstar, superstar mm -hmm. ceiling. You have an opening there if you're Taiwan Malone. I'm gonna my next one is gonna be sound weird because I've been talking so much and spreading so many rainbows and butterflies about the secondary. But I'm gonna say for camp, stock down on the on the secondary for this very reason. Mm. This secondary was light years better in the spring than it was last spring, last summer, and during the season because of depth, injuries, issues, et cetera. Are they going to get barfed now? But <laughs> they did not. And Emeka. <laughs> they did not have to compete against Emeka, mm. Julian, okay. Xavier, Marv, all at the same time during the spring. So I think that yeah. you probably have to pump the brakes a little bit on the results slash performance that we get to see in the in fall because these guys are now going against the fully armed and operational battle station mm -hmm. of the Ohio State offense. And that's going to be an adjustment period that's going to take a few weeks. Now, the good news for that is that in week one, they play Indiana. Uh, and then, you know, you're not, that's going to be a bit of a drop off. So I think the, the, the gains that <laughs> just they, a little bit. just a touch, <laughs> the gains that they've made from last season to now will look vast uh, against Indiana. But what we get to see over the next month I bet we see less hands on balls. You know what I'm saying? He's H's on H -O -B's. H-O-B's. Yeah. Berm saying buy the August dip. That's what I'm saying. Buy the, buy dip. the dip. I like that. I don't, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that term, but buy the dip. Yeah. Buy the dip. That's that's good investment advice. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Uh, I think I would stay in the secondary. And Ryan Day has mentioned <laughs> the name of Please don't. Calvin Simpson Hunt a couple times. Yeah. And he was not here in the spring. And... Some of that is, I think, is like making sure he lists all the cornerbacks. But I think I'm not saying he's going to compete for a starting job because I think they're pretty set at cornerback with the three that they have. Maybe there's room for a fourth, and if that's the case, maybe Calvin can get his name into that mix. I think Calvin Simpson Hunt is going to be a stud on special teams and establish himself as such throughout camp because that dude can fly. <laughs> and when you can fly, they find a place for you on special teams. And he's, he's like, big. He's like, yeah, he's big, and he's like comfortably a sub 11 hundred meter guy, right? He's, he's like a 10 six. Yeah, he's. Yeah. He's a different kind of, of speedster, I think, that we've seen really fast guys come through this program, but I think he is in that upper echelon of guys who can just flat out run. And, and I think there's a place for him, even as a true freshman, even in a world where maybe he's not totally ready to take on full cornerback responsibilities, I think he finds himself playing a lot. I think I want to make sure that there is some investment in chip training. And I know that a healthy Travion, I've said many times, has – the highest ceiling to change the offense for Ohio State. I loved what Mayan Williams gave the offense a year ago with his toughness. I thought he was the best fit at running back. Um, I feel like if you if you mashed them together, you might get Chip train him. And it doesn't always seem that way because uh, he, <laughs> he he doesn't flash as like as explosive as Travion, but his measurables are pretty close to that already in terms of top end speed. Uh, he's got some of that same size and toughness that Mayan does, or else he wouldn't have been playing at linebacker. I don't, I don't expect that he's going to be uh, second and top two in carries on this team, but I bet that Ohio State wants to find a way to use him regularly. I won't get my wish of using him as a fullback or an extra tight end. Uh, I don't ex expect that I'll get that, but they 
this team loves Chip Trainum. They love his mindset. They love his work ethic. They love his athleticism. And some form or fashion, I'd say he's going to play. As long as he's not returning kicks, I don't. <laughs> you're good. I don't want any stock in that. I think that that yeah. was not a good fit. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Um, it's just so hard at running back because there's so many guys there. I know, that, but I thought I could get it cheap. Like I'm sitting here mm -hmm. thinking, I think people should pay whatever the price is right now for Trayvon Henderson because I really do think he's going to have a bounce back year, a huge year. Mm. Um, but to me, the one guy, and I, it's going to sound, it's going to sound crazy. Am I crazy? The, the guy that's going to make or break the offense in some ways is Joe Royer. And, and what, what I exactly? Knew I said it earlier. What exactly you get out of this offense? <laughs> is going to be determined by how frequently and how successfully Ryan Day can use his bread and butter, which is 12 personnel, and having a, an option opposite Cade Stover at tight end that can run block, that can pass block, that can catch the ball, um, be a red zone threat. Joe Royer was a very, very good pass catcher in high school. We haven't seen that much out of him because of multiple things that have gone wrong in the last couple of years for him, mm -hmm. but he's going to get the, sh the, sh the shot to be that guy opposite Cade or, you know, even sometimes ahead of Cade. So um, that's 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 my third choice. On Wednesday, when we left the press conference and came out to the indoor field at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, similar to the situation where we are right now, mm. Joe Royer was working out on the side down here. And I got to say, it's carved up. Carved up slab of beef. So slab, slab of beef. beef. It's looked like they put a goose suit on him. <laughs> goose him up a little bit. He... Looked phenomenal. So I'm glad that maybe you took that before me because I've already talked about Joe Royer. I didn't Royer see him, to be clear. Multiple times. Um, but I just wanted, I think uh, I was using the men's room at that time. <laughs> um, but uh, he was uh, he was definitely like, I'm, I could sense the energy. The Joe energy. Well, you were in the men's room. No, when I got back in here. <laughs> when I got back in this room. Uh -huh. okay, yeah. yeah, we'll leave good. it at that. Good, good, good. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll take what is probably a fairly obvious one at this point in Kenyatta Jackson. Mm. Um, I like the more we just hear about him, the more I am convinced that he's going to play a pretty pivotal role in this defense. And obviously there's two guys in front of him at defensive end with JT Tuimolo and Jack Sawyer. And you have to factor in the Jack position and how much you're going to use that. Brian Day said on Wednesday, like we're not sure yet. We'll see how that develops. But regardless of all that, I, I think that Kenyatta is going to be a guy who eventually becomes like a 25 snap per game player. And, and like, and I think that start, I think it started in the spring, but it continues now in, into camp. And I can see, you know, I don't know when we talk to the offensive line, but I think it's maybe more toward the middle of camp. If we're asking those guys, like, hey, who's been tough to block? Like, who's who's been a pain in your butt this in, like throughout <laughs> camp so far? I think a lot of them are going to say Kenyatta. I wonder personally, and this is what I'm going to hope to get an answer from Jim Knowles on later on Thursday when we get a chance to talk to him and the linebackers, is Kenyatta Jackson a candidate to compete against Mitchell Melton for the Jack? Um, he is the more fluid athlete type that they want in that role, as opposed to what Jack Sawyer was a year ago, a little bigger and, and maybe not quite as, as nimble. Um, but Kenyatta Jackson is, and I wonder if he's done so much and made so many advances this off season that he's becoming one of those guys. You're like, yeah, we got it. We got to find a way to, to make sure he gets that 25 reps again. Are you off of the Caden Curry there? No, no, no. I just think that can. At what six, about CJ Hicks, man? At, <laughs> when you're talking about a 6'5", 255 pound defensive end who can run the way he runs, the goal of that Jack position is to rush the passer. Uh, and that might be a way to get him on the field and not have to take off Jack Sawyer or to JT Tunelo. I think part, I mean, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong. Part of the value of the jack at least i understand it from the first chalk talks was like putting them back into some coverage and confusing looks it's not solely hey, rushing the congrats passer. under 30 under 30. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do more interviews now mike no they don't want to talk to me okay um <laughs> congratulations to mike salini there for his uh award he was walking through that's who berm was talking to like I'm not arguing with if Berm wants to see that cool. I want to see it. I'm not sure they do, but I think it'd be but interesting. It, it feels like that role needs to be more linebacker skills. And if you if you're taking someone with Kenyatta's pure pass rushing ability, like the Jack is not solely designed to do that. Yeah, I, and part that's part of the job I think is getting getting after as, as a pass rusher. But I do think there's like a lot of dirty work involved in that where you're like mirroring, pulling guards, and really sticking your nose in in the A gap or the B gap and just trying to confuse run fits. So I don't like Kenyatta could probably do all that, but 
Um, that's why I think it's it's good for Ohio State. Like Jim Knowles, I think found guys in Oklahoma State could do all of that, like in one package. That's great if you can find that. But at a place like Ohio State, you can kind of mix and match personnel. Like if it's a run situation, maybe you lean more linebacker. If it's a pure pass situation, maybe you do lean someone. Like you can mix and match your jack. Yeah, mm. mix and match your jack. I could get down with HOBs. That. That's right. Um, I don't. Know. We just covered so many more right, right there. I was going to say Mitchell Melton to watch. I don't know. It's a it's a low investment, low risk investment at this point to see how that pays off. But I've also talked about him a lot this week. Uh, so we'll see what uh, transpires. I'm really curious about Josh Simmons. I think that's a, this is still a good time to invest in that. They're talking about Tegra Shabola and and you know other options that could play out there. But I agree with something that with Bill's take on other transfer portal guys. Ohio State's not generally taking them for long-term development. They think they can help right away. And if that's the case, uh, Josh Simmons be uh, a starting right tackle by the end of the month. That would at least be a decent stock to pick up. And so I will. Agreed. All right. I could go on and on. We, we could I think do we this all day. more ideas about <laughs> fuck coins. And yeah, I mean, we're going to need America to really step up to the plate and devise some well, sort of let's game. Let's just ask PJ Fleck how he did it. He'll didn't. We should just ask America to create a game for us through this season that they can score at home. It's fun. It's like playing Jeopardy on your couch, only without Jeopardy or your couch. Do you guys watch Jeopardy? And like, I watch you, Jeopardy every day. So do I. But do you try to guess the answer to Final Jeopardy by only knowing the category? Uh, no, that seems <laughs> preposterous. I do it a lot. And I've, I've been right like three times in my life. It's been It's felt pretty good. Yeah, right. He doesn't even care about the question. He's just going to give an answer. That's right. Ballsy. That's how, the that's first how. time it had the first time it happened. The answer was Lincoln Logs. <laughs> I don't know how he pulled that one out. The, the, what was, the, what was the category? The category was, like category toys, was toys named wooden, after wooden toys. It was toys <laughs> named after presidents. <laughs> toys and games, I think it was. I was like, yeah. Link, it's Lincoln Logs. That's right. Wooden toys and games. Uh, congratulations to Bill on that Thank incredible accomplishment. Uh, more, a lot more coverage coming after the first practice of spring for spring of training camp. I don't even know what day it is. What uh, month is it? What month is it? I don't know. August is here. It's training camp. We're going to be here. There's going to be a lot of coverage on the podcast and at OhioState.Rivals.com. Please hang out with us. That's Bill and Burr. I'm Austin. We will talk to you later.